Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Those of you continuing to finish your dessert, please do so. But we have a special presentation for you now. At this time, we are proud to present the United States Army Corps, based out of Fort Myer, Virginia, and led by Master Sergeant Jason Gottschall. The chorus was formed in 1956 as the vocal counterpart of the United States Army Band, Pershing's own. In addition to performing presidents, visiting dignitaries, and heads of state, the chorus has appeared in our nation's most prominent concert halls. The dedication and professionalism brought to each performance by the members of this group have established a reputation of excellence which is recognized around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the world-renowned the United States Army Chorus.
Sergeant First Class Heath Sorensen, narrator for today's concert. On behalf of our enlisted conductor, Master Sergeant Jason Gottschall, and all members of the U.S. Army Chorus, it is a pleasure to be here this afternoon. A special thanks to our host, Sergeant Major of the Army, Grinston. Thank you for inviting the chorus once again. It really is a pleasure. Now, you just heard the cadence call. They say that in the Army, which, you know, it's a good thing, looking among, among all the senior leaders here, that none of you chose to go home to mommy. That's a good thing. It's reassuring. And, and by the way, we did find that tent puppy. So, no worries there. But seriously, as leaders and senior leaders in the Army, you all know what it takes. You've seen it in your soldiers, what it takes to be Army strong. You know their dedication, the service, and that uh, the selfless service that it takes. And so we think this next song really shows that, that selfless service. This is American Soldier.
can sing along if you remember all the words. <laughs> and we hope you enjoy this, these songs. And then we're going to follow that up and close our program with all of us standing for the Army song. It has been a pleasure to be with you today. And these are the songs for the active division. First Cavalry Division. <laughs>
And this year's nominee to have I guess play the video. I don't know. I didn't tell you that. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Um, so I'm sorry, Drew, I um, I'm not even going to ask you to say that because he killed me. Anyway, um, like physically, um, he's going to retire this year, and I always say uh, the best sergeant major I know, uh, he is going to retire, and I always uh, want to publicly say thank you for your dedication, your service, not only to the Army, but the office of the sergeant major Army, and uh, his uh, commitment to the Army has been phenomenal, and I can't thank him enough. And oh, by the way, he doesn't know who won the best squad. So we're going to transition. You're going to see the SMA's XO, Star Major Brady. Where are you at? Okay, she's the only one that knows. So don't hound Star Major Albertson, and she'll be up here in a minute. And welcome to the team. There's a lot of things that have changed in the last few, few years. One thing that hasn't changed is that is naming the honorary SMA. We only pick one a year, and this year's recipient is Mr. Ted. So, <laughs> sir, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for years and years of taking care of our soldiers and their families. And on, your, on behalf of your Freedom Foundation that has helped countless veterans, you help them find a purpose, meaningful employment, and other support to our families. We couldn't be happier to announce that you are, without a doubt, the honorary SMA for this year. So, Mr. Ted Hacker, and now, please play the video. I really like the honorary SMA award, and we only give it out to one individual a year. And this year's nominee, Ted Hacker, has been an incredible supporter to our soldiers and, and their families. And changed his life. 
and he and he sees the differences that he can make with uh, with help in our community. And again, I, I'm probably always off a little bit on the numbers, but I would say between 10 and 14 million dollars we've been able to give back. But it's not about the money. It's about changing lives. It's about helping people. It's about making a difference. And, and, and I always love this. When you go by somebody that's in uniform, or I wear my hat all the time. It says U.S. Army because I'm proud of being a soldier. And people say, thank you for your service. Well, Ted's one of those guys that says, thank you. But he's one of those guys that makes a difference. He just doesn't say thank you. He changes the lives of people. So that's his, you know, proud to call him a friend. Proud to call him a uh, honorary now. Sorry, maybe you know. You know, we're committed to helping veterans and their families till the day we die. We're going to do this every day, each and every day, until we can't do it anymore. And just bring every ounce of passion and commitment that we possibly can out of ourselves to be able to help as many people as possible. Thank you, S.N.A. Grinson, for this wonderful recognition, recognition and, th and thanks to all the former sergeants, major of the Army, for supporting my nomination. I am truly humbled and honored. It never crossed my mind that I would be recognized for something that I do each and every day because of the passion and belief I have in helping our veterans and families. I wake up every day full of hope, full of purpose, and excited about the possibilities before me. I found my calling in life. After spending many years in the music business, I met the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly, on his Hope and Freedom Tour through Afghanistan, Kuwait, Uzbekistan, and Iraq, when we performed for the troops. Living in the compounds and the barracks with the soldiers, Understanding the sacrifices that they make and what motivated them changed my life. Upon my return to the States, SMA, SMA and I talked about how we could work together to help our veterans. He was getting ready to retire, and I was eager to fulfill the feelings that I had while I was in the AOR. After much discussion, the American Freedom Foundation was born in 2004. It was a tremendous opportunity for me to bring my management skill set to a nonprofit where I could help create strategies, develop ideas, and implement plans, all for the benefit of our veterans and families. During these 18 years together, AFF produced concerts that raised over a million and a half dollars, held hiring events that connected thousands of veterans with hundreds of corporate partners awarded scholarships to military spouses and family members, 
and even created a podcast called Your Next Mission, which Sergeant Major Tilly hosts, and which is currently the number one podcast in the country, according to Feedspot, which is a leading podcast newsletter. I know SMA Tilly wouldn't want me to talk about himself, him, but truthful, truthfully, for the truth be known, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Aside from Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and my mother, he has been and continues to be the most important and influential person in my life. He taught me so much, not only about the Army and the military in general, but about life. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. Thanks, SMA. I also want to thank the AFF team, Johnny Myers, Christian Walt, Mark Hurricane Halliburton, and Faith Lauder. Your hard work and dedication is an inspiration and a gift to all those we serve. We are so lucky to have you. And thanks to the great team at JTI for all your support of AFF and the work we are doing. You are really, truly making a difference. Thanks again, SMA Grinston, for this incredible honor that reinforces my commitment to do whatever I can to continue to help better the lives of our veterans and their families. And I want to thank each and every one of you here that have served for your service to our great country. Thank you. an exhausting competition, um, so thanks for adding me to, or 
asking me to add to the surprise there, Sergeant Major. Okay, I got some pictures here. Go ahead and bring those up. No, this is not happening. That's what Staff Sergeant Clint Romache said. It was a chilly morning in the Kamdesh Valley of Afghanistan, October 3rd, 2009. Kop Kidi, an isolated outpost surrounded by towering mountains on all sides. Snaps and explosions all around sounded like a drum solo. Small arms, RPGs, and mortars. Taliban fighters were crawling around the high ground in every direction and pouring through the front gate. Over 300 insurgents against 50 Americans and two Latvian allies. By the end of the battle, 150 insurgents would be dead. That's because Sergeant Romache decided that he would not let the insurgents take that outpost. In the darkest moment, the platoon had lost contact with their western guard post. They were almost out of ammunition, and they had control of just a couple of buildings. The rest of the outpost was in flames. This is not happening, Romache said, and he backed up those words. In a later interview, Sergeant Romache said, we weren't going to quit. We weren't even close to being beat. They were fueled by a sense of duty and love for their teammates. They were experts. They were athletes. They were warriors. But they didn't become those things in the moment of need. Those soldiers had worked, sacrificed, and endured. So that when Sergeant Romache stood in front of them and said, this is not happening, they could deliver. Being exceptional is not a state at which you arrive. It is a condition that requires commitment and constant attention. And all of our best squads sitting here today know this. We are at an inflection point in our world history. Five minutes of watching the news and we see that. We're in a dangerous strategic environment. Future conflict will be violent and complex and it will span all domains. Land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace. There are folks who will tell you that future fights will be brief, fire-centric, and over the horizon. History reminds us that wars are always longer and more violent than we expect them to be. Eventually, they always come down to a close fight on the ground. They come down to soldiers fighting across brutal terrain, maintaining a low signature while navigating with a map and a compass. They come down to squads shooting, moving, and communicating seamlessly together as a team bound together through shared hardship and a common goal. Much like I know this competition has been for all of our best squads. Our best squads have diligently represented the warrior way of life, being professional, fit, disciplined, and great teammates. You all have proven yourselves exceptional soldiers and team players. I know I said this once before, but I think it's worth repeating. Being exceptional is not a state at which you arrive. It is a condition that requires commitment and constant attention. Like the best squads that are here today, we should all commit to what it takes to be excellent in whatever we're doing. To all the soldiers here today, especially all those soldiers in the uh, best squad competition, we're all extremely proud of you, and I'm excited to find out who won. So I'll make it back over to you.
Thank you, General George. It's an honor to have you with us today, and we greatly appreciate your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Best Warrior Competition dates back to 2002, when the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Eric K. Shinshek, and SMA Jack Tilly made the decision to culminate all the NCO and Soldier of the Year comp competitions across the Army at the Department of the Army level. In 2009, as part of the Year of the Non-Commissioned Officer, Chief of the Staff of the Army, George W. Casey, Jr., and the SMA decided to formally name the trophy presented to the NCO and Soldier of the Year as a way to honor the legacy of SMA Jack Tilly and what this competition does for our Army to enhance the self-development, self-study, and to set training standards for our force. In 2021, as part of This Is My Squad initiative, SMA Grinston announced the creation of the United States Army annual Best Squad Competition to recognize the best squads from across our Army. Along with the announcement of the Best Warriors, we will announce the results of the inaugural United States Army Best Squad Competition. As a prelude to the big announcement, please watch this short video of the 2022 Best Squad Competition. Working our way up from Division to 18th Airborne Corps competition, all the way up to Force Comp competition, you really saw how a small unit can come together and really embody the Esprit de Corps of their unit and the This Is My Squad mentality. Never be too big for the small stuff. Um, and remembering the small things and not doing that well. To be one of the first competitors is not. I feel great to set the example for others. I feel, I feel great to be able to go back to my unit and share my experiences with junior soldiers and other NCOs. At every single level, we've been having to refine our skills and broaden our horizons of what we need to know for each competition. So it's been a long trip to get here. And now the announcement and the answer to the questions you've had been waiting for all day. Which squad is the best squad and who is the non-commissioned officer and soldier of the year for America's Army for 2022? Well, just like your last, I have no idea. But the only person in the whole room and the whole world that can answer that question is the executive officer of the Sergeant Major of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergeant Major Christy Brady. Please stand. Where are you? Okay. I'm blind. 
Sergeant Jonathan Warren, Nashville, Tennessee. Specialist Coy Anderson, Plainfield, Indiana. Specialist Jake Reitman from Santa Clarita, California. And Specialist Nathan Wallen from Stockton, California. Please welcome the United States Special Operations Command Squad, 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment.
finally what you've all been waiting for. It is my extreme honor and privilege today to announce the first ever U.S. Army's Best Squad. United States Special Operations Command Best Squad from the 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. That's a, that is a big trophy. Your name could be on that if you like that ranger regiment. Great job, non officers officers and soldiers. Let's give another big round of applause to our NCO Soldier of the Year and the first ever United States Army's best squad. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again. What a phenomenal, phenomenal event. I agree with both the Vice and the SMA. This is the event to be at. And if you're a soldier, this is the event you want to make it to every year. A special thanks to our sponsors again, who supported the Army's best warriors, and to our title sponsor, Veterans United, who will also be hosting at their booth tomorrow two very special people, Greg Morgan, country western singer, and Rob Ritter, actor and comedian from Hollywood. So step by the booth and check out both of the individuals. And I think they have some book signs going on. We could not do all this without our sponsors. So again, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a big round of applause for all those who helped sponsor our fine soldiers and my commission. Lastly, I would ask for the non-commissioned officer of the year and the SWAT of the year to come back up front and line up. So all of you um, star makers and commanders who have coins in your pocket can come up here and give them a time. That's right. And shake their hands and congratulate them. So please come back forward. Stage up in the front. And ladies and gentlemen, this includes the best squad in Warrior Way Award form. Please come up here and recognize these great soldiers and have a great Army Day.